Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Chris, and thank you very much, uh, Didi Nyoro, for that presentation. Uh, and, um, you know, it's, it's always difficult when you follow up with someone who is taller than you. You're trying to bring yourself down. Uh, let me say that um, I'm very happy to be here, or invited guests, the chairperson a Budget and Appropriations Committee of Parliament, Bonadidi Nyoro. I'm very happy to, to speak after you because uh, you preempt and make my work very easy in terms of what I'm going to say. Let me say that my colleagues, principal secretaries that are here, and uh, the development partners and invited guests, members of the fourth estate, ladies and gentlemen, let me say that I'm very happy. Oh, come on. This, this thing is not well positioned. Do I, do I speak sounding? Okay, no problem. If it's okay, you can hear me? Okay, it is my pleasure to be here this morning and especially to officiate on the opening of public sector hearings for the financial year 2023-2024 and the medium term budget preparations. And the purpose of organizing this forum is to give all stakeholders an opportunity to interrogate the proposed sector budgets and give their inputs on planned government priorities as well as programs for the period. And I'm very happy that uh, Dede Nyoro just put us through what we need to do. It's only that uh, he also talked about supplementary budget that is coming up, but the, I think most of the time the supplementary budget comes in to cover the changing circumstances, especially economic environment, but also changing priorities of government. But that is in addition to what he has added, so we do believe that it comes in to help us to shape the reality in terms as we, as, as we go along. But the most important thing is that the, operation, the, the activity we are starting today that is, is supposed to address m market uh, failures and even problems that arise as well as institutional, uh, uh, should I say, shortcomings. So for us, it's very, very important that we get suggestions from the public and the Kenyans in terms of where we are going and how we deal with those challenges that are facing Kenyans from time to time and especially in this planning cycle. I therefore, I therefore wish to sincerely thank all the participants for finding time to attend to this event and make presentations as well as discussions and I do hope a fair amount of effort and even positive discussions will take place and will take that outcome very well and very positively so that we can actually implement the issues that we would like to have uh, to implement. Let me briefly talk about public participation. Ladies and gentlemen, Public participation in the budgeting process is an important requirement in our constitution, but it's also important in diverse ways. First, it enables the stakeholders to engage in the planning process to identify their development needs and improve the process and also propose homegrown solutions to address the challenges that are seen, the challenges that may come in the future. In this respect, it means that it becomes an endogenous process of, of owning the process and also helping us actually to develop in terms of the endogenous constraints that we have. The second one is that it helps in promoting inclusivity in the budget making process. And so it helps us to enhance a greater ownership and participation of Kenyans in subsequent program implementation and even trying to account or even to question the process in future. Third, it allows harmonization of government interventions and also minimizes duplication of efforts and wastage of resources. Fourth, it enables the citizens to better appreciate the resource constraint and I'm very happy that uh, alluded to that because if you don't understand the resource constraint, then it means that you cannot appropriately address the appropriate solutions. 
And also, for us, it is very, very important that it allows us to prioritize what programs can be taken at a particular time. And finally, it enhances, it enhances the, 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 the openness and transparency uh, by providing a platform for receiving feedback from the public on the effectiveness of public spending. And that is a very, very important step towards accountability. Let me turn to economic outlook. Ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you that from the literature and all the things that I've read through, the outlook for 2023 is not looking very good. There are clear signals that is going to be a tough year. But the global economy is one good example in terms of where we are going. Multiple factors are likely to come into play and affect the growth prospects across the globe. For instance, if the Russia-Ukrainian conflict continues, it means that the global supply chains will continue to be disrupted. It also means that those, those supply disruptions are likely to affect the relative price structures in most of the economies, and so inflation, but also is going to affect incomes from the exporters that depend on that region. So in a sense, we have to be prepared for some binding constraints that will be coming up. Indeed, some parts of the world are already in economic crisis. Low-income countries have been hit hard by the supply disruptions, the signaling in terms of debt. Actually, did the Euro even try to show the computation of what happens to external debt when the exchange rate itself depreciates? The surges in food uh, prices and even commodity prices and the devastating effects of climate change. And, and this is coming at the time when we also have limited access to foreign finance and even foreign market, uh, capital markets. So in the, even in the middle and high income economies, it's a combination of factors that are hitting the cost of living. We have witnessed in Kenya, for example, that food security and climate change has produced a sphere crisis that has compounded the supply disruptions. For us, we have seen that food security and climate change is going to be a pillar and a policy paradigm that we have to look at because it affects poverty, it affects inequality, and even currently we have seen that it is producing social conflicts because of competition of the, the resources available, especially water. So the financial year 2023-2024 Medium term budget is being prepared against that severe and very constrained background. But of course, having said that, I could also talk, talk about debt related risks. It's a topical issue in Kenya, and I think Mohesmiwa Dede Nyero has alluded to it, and I'm sure the sector working groups are going to pick it up and give it an adequate treatment. According to the World Bank, Ladies and gentlemen, the world's poorest countries have been spending the highest share of their revenue on debt service payments. And I'm sure our sector working group will even break it down on the Kenyan side to actually show the, the actual figures and what is happening. The debt related risks uh, are on the increase for low income and middle income countries. It is on this recognition that the government of Kenya will continue to pursue a process or a, a strategy of fiscal consolidation to push for a platform for debt sustainability. But we also want to make sure that we have a strategy for gradual reduction of the overall fiscal deficit and the pace of def debt accumulation over the medium term, as well as utilize some of the instruments that we can use for an effective liability management. And most people have been asking what that is. Essentially what we are really saying is that we can actually provide, reduce expensive debt and substitute that with more uh, concessional debt that is long term. And that allows you to create fiscal space. The policy will be supported by enhanced revenue mobilization 
and institutional austerity measures on non-priority recurrent expenditures, as well as redirecting resources to finance priority growth supporting programs. And because I noticed that my earlier life, I had dealt with these issues of debt so much, and I think for those of you who would like to be interested, we've done some work on growing with the debt, and especially from the African Economic Research Consortium, a special issue that was published in Journal of African Economists in December 2021 is a good example. And we talked about growing with debt because I think uh, the De De Nero talked about so many things about uh, debt situation and when debt to GDP signals whether there is growth. But I think at that level, I would like maybe even the sector working groups to look at the efficiency of investment and capital accumulation when you are using debt. Growing with the debt is a major important literature. It starts all the way back from Marshall Plan. So we know, we know that it is an appropriate strategy, but we also have to, to diagnose the efficiency of public investment with debt, uh, with the debt-funded projects, and where, how it accumulates and uh, stimulates growth. Ladies and gentlemen, according to the latest focus from the IMF, uh, global growth is forecast is, is likely to be very slow, or is forecast to be slow at about 3.2%. Uh, that, uh, that was forecast in t t uh, 2022, and it's likely only to rise slightly to 2.7% in, in 2023. And for the emerging markets and developing economies, growth forecast is about 37 If some of us look at it in terms of net out population growth, you can see actually the actual effect that would reduce poverty and produce uh, uh, sustainable growth is very limited. Advanced economies growth is forecast to be around 1%. The euro area growth is projected to be about 0.5%. China's economy is forecast to grow at about 4.4%. And when we come to our region, the emerging, uh, emerging market growth is forecast to grow at 2.9%. And the whole of sub-Saharan Africa is actually projected to grow at 3.7%. So essentially, you can see how constrained growth is. And my, my area work in this area again talks to itself. We have shown that strong growth is very, very important for reducing poverty. Strong growth supplemented with targeted social protection programs will actually sustain growth and even uh, work on the side of inequality in the long term. So it means that it is pro-growth strategy that is very important for poverty reduction. And so it means that when you have low growth outcome, then it means that you do very little in terms of uh, poverty. But coming back to our own setup and the bottom-up economic transformation that we're proposing, that the current government is actually proposing, the current administration is proposing, and which we internally ourselves, and uh, I talk here as a Kenyan and a, as an economist, uh, buy in so much and we can explain it. Uh, I don't want to talk about it because it's something that I can talk about until cows come home. But let me 